I need a holiday after this vacation? Talk to yourself. <clears throat> the airpen lands. When we hail a cab, we walk in the front door of the home, of our home, and go to bed. Finally. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, Madam Toastmaster, who's ever had a holiday, a vacation, and when they get home, they're more exhausted than when they left? I experienced this in September. My partner and I, Jen, we went to Ecuador for three weeks, and it was supposed to be amazing. And it was when we got to the airport to leave for Ecuador. Now, there were some good parts, but this was an exhausting holiday. <coughs> Our flight into Ecuador now, to set the scene, Ecuador, the, the main capital city, Quito, is situated between a mountain, a mountain, a mountain, a mountain, and a valley. It is one of the most dangerous airports to fly into in the world. Only the most skilled pilots are actually allowed to fly into Ecuador. So as we're sitting there, waiting for the ascent, ding! Seatbelts on, we're going to be beginning our descent in 30 minutes. We can feel the plane speeding up and it's shaking, and instead of touching down, we're back in the air. And nobody's telling us what's going on. Until two hours later, we land in Guayaquil on the other side of Ecuador. And still, nobody's telling us what's going on. And we're in an airport where our airline does not fly to normally, and where there's nobody working at 4 AM. And so we're stranded in an airport in the wrong city in Ecuador. This is how we begin our vacation. But I'll spare you the details on how we finally get to Quito where my partner and I, Jen, we like to rent a vehicle when we go on holidays. Because it allows us to see more of the country, we can do whatever we want, we set our own schedule, we set our own tours. And we have fun with it. Now, being a third world country, I don't trust bringing all of my money to Ecuador. So I bring one credit card with a $5,000 limit. So that way if it gets lost or stolen, I know how much I'm losing. We show up to the car rental place, and they tell me that I need a $5,000 deposit on my vehicle rental. This puts a slight damper on the trip, because now we don't even have money for a hotel or food if we give this deposit. And keep in mind, we just <coughs> finally arrived in Quito after this nightmare, and we barely slept. So we decide, forget it. We'll catch a cab, go to the hotel, and figure out what's going So the next morning, instead of going to where I pre-booked our car, I go to a different car in the place where I only need to provide a thousand dollar deposit. Trip finally starts. We're on vacation, and we're driving down the mountain to the beach. So down from Quito to situated in Valley and all these mountains to the beach on the far end of the country. And it is a gorgeous drive. We're driving through cloud forest. There's rainforest over here. There's a cloud actually forming around us to head off to wherever in the world. And it is beautiful. Now, when we rented the car, this is my favorite part of Ecuador. You rent the car, and they go through the laws, which are basically none, and say, here is the posted speed that you'll see on the road. Let's say it's 90. Here is your suggested range, 90 to 120. Don't go beyond 120. Well, they only gave me a Chevy Aveo, 
so going beyond 120 was not a problem. <laughs> but I was having fun with this speed limit range, and I think we should adopt it here. <laughs> Something to know about the roadways in Ecuador. What may seem like a small, simple, two-lane street, one going this way, one coming this way, well, that's an uneducated Westerner coming in. Now, to somebody more enlightened, this two-lane street is a six-lane freeway with a small car, a truck, and a motorcycle, <laughs> all driving side by side on this twisty, windy, turny mountain road with a 200-meter cliff on one side. I was having fun. But to add to the fun, every so often, there's a dip in the road because part of the highway fell into the valley. <laughs> Hello. So you have to avoid those. Luckily, I avoided those. <laughs> and now we've been driving for about three hours on our way. It's getting dark out. And we're driving along a nice, smooth patch of highway. And it's dark. I can't see anything around us. And all of a sudden, <laughs> unmarked construction zones. <laughs> Luckily, it was a rental car. <laughs> Moving forward to the resort. It was a beautiful resort with nobody at it. And as much Spanish as I learned in advance, I thought somebody might speak English. Nobody spoke English. Mm -hmm. So we got the adventure of figuring out how to get to our room, how to order food uh, with our little phrase book. And that was fun. That was experience in itself. Running sure on time. So I'll spare some of the details at the resort. Except for one. We're cooking one evening. And it's an old stove that we're cooking at. And it has this glass pull down. And it has all the wires <coughs> in it. And it looks like you can actually heat this up. So I pull it down, start boiling our pot of rice. And as it gets warmer, it explodes. Glass everywhere. And that's not even the worst part of the trip. Jen gets sick for three days. High fever spiking, heart rate over 100, and me not sleeping for 36 hours, force feeding her Gatorade and Advil making sure she doesn't die because the nearest hospital is 250 miles away. So when we finally get home, we looked at each other and said, we need a holiday after this vacation. <laughs> <laughs>